Hello everyone and welcome to my studio. I'm Amy Nicole and I'm coming to you from rainy and chilly South Texas. Today I'm finally going to share my Make 9 for 2020. As I've said in my previous video where I recapped uh, the year of slow sewing and I talked about my sort of pseudo plans for 2020. I don't like to be too specific with my sewing plans. Um, this is kind of a new thing for me, but I still like to do a make nine because I do have a sort of ongoing master list of everything that I would like to sew or like not that I would like the top things that are on my mind for this year and I'll um, put a little close up of how that looks in my bullet journal. Um, I explained a little bit about it in my last video so if you want to go back and check that out I'll link it up here. But I do like to do a make nine. I like to look at that whole list and see like what are the top nine things that I'm most excited about right now. Um, this could change throughout the year. It might end up being more of a make three and three, which is a new hashtag. I forget who started it. I'll link them um, <laughs> once I figure it out, um, which is more like three things a quarter. So every quarter you are picking some three new things to focus on instead of like deciding your nine for the whole year, um, which I think is awesome. But I do like the sort of cohesiveness of picking a make nine. Being able to go through, look at like what I'm really excited about sewing this year. So I'm here to tell you about my make nine today. So I went ahead and grabbed all of the fabrics that I have planned for these Make Nines because these are all from my stash, which I'm really excited about, sort of continuing that use what you have mindset. And so I'm going to go with over these in order. I'll be sure to link all of these patterns in the comments or in the description box below. So first and foremost which I think this will be the first one I tackle just because I'm so excited about it. Um, this fabric you may recognize from my eco-friendly fabric haul my that I did last year. Again I'll link that video up here so you can go check it out. It is beautiful, it is sheer, it is rose polka dot, which I'm branching into the world of pink with my love for like this dusty rose color. Um, and I think this is just screaming to be a wilder gown by Friday Pattern Company. I am so pumped about this. It's sheer, so obviously I will need to make some kind of slip. I have this peach, peachy pink um, charmeuse that I think I have enough of to make a Ogden cami slip hack out of, um, which will work out because I also am going to need the slip for another one of these make nines and this color will look fine underneath this, as you can see. Um, I think I'm only going to make the slip as long as this layer here so that there's some fun stuff underneath. Um, the slip dress is a little tricky because with the Ogden, as you know, I don't know how see-through this actually is, but it has like um, that little facing piece and I'm feeling like I would need to completely like double line the slip dress, uh, which again, I probably have enough to do here. I could probably even cut it on the cross grain if I wanted to. Um, so 
that is my plan for the wilder gown beautiful pattern the instagram is like freaking out about this pattern everyone's making it i'm having major fomo about it i know it's a little bit like jumping on the bandwagon and the practicality of this dress isn't like necessarily conducive to my everyday life but I don't care <laughs> I want to make this dress um, it's beautiful it has these like it has a tie in the front you can wear it closed or open it has raglan sleeves gathers pleats at the collar it's just gonna be very flowy and lovely and beautiful and I'm pretty sure I have enough of this fabric to do that I have a lot of this fabric. so yeah, so if, if I don't use all of this fabric, which is a possibility, I might do a de-stash of the rest. Um, we'll see. It's hard for me to get rid of things. Even when I've already made something out of a fabric, I'm like, ooh, but I could also make this. So anyways, number two, this, again, beautiful fabric that I have a lot of. It is a crepe but it's sheer. Um, it's not a crepe de chine. It's just, a, I'm guessing, a silk crepe. It's not sheer. It's just a little bit, like, when you hold it up to the light. But I think for the purpose, like, I can't, well, I guess I, I might need to double face this. Um, my, for the purpose that I would like to use it for, I think it'll be okay. I have a slip I can wear underneath. So this is going to be the Jupe La Boheme. Um, and the pattern company is escaping my mind, so I will scroll it down below. This fuchsia fabric is not my color, okay? The, I also got this from the um, eco-friendly fabric haul video. And, well, I didn't get it from the video. I got it from a pattern maker I used to work for. And um, it's very pink. It's very, like, not the kind of pink I love. It's very fuchsia-y. But I have a plan to try to bleach it and change the color. Obviously, I'm going to test a swatch first. Um, but I really am loving like the flowy wrap skirts with the ruffles. Um, I'm going to bleach it and I'm aiming for a lighter pink and I kind of want to play around with painting a print on it. Uh, again, I will test it out. Don't freak out. I'm not going to totally ruin this beautiful fabric. But, um, like I said, I have a lot of this fabric. I'm not in love with it. Um, I will probably wait until we're in the new house to do this because I'm going to need a lot of space for this project if I do end up doing a print on it. So, to be continued, but I really want to experiment with doing some fabric painting and printing, so I thought this would be a good project to experiment on and I'm hoping that I can lighten the overall color of it a little bit again so so much of this fabric y'all I have so much of this this has got to be more than five yards um that jupe la Boheme. This fabric is going to be a Tate top. I love this pattern. I've made two Tate tops in a white um, leather that just one of them, I wore it to my bachelorette party, things got crazy, it did not survive. <laughs> Then I had to make a new one because I loved it so much and um, the new one I didn't have like the best cuts of the leather that I used left and I pressed it which you're not really supposed to press leather but I was just trying to like smooth some things out and I also like stamped instead of putting a tag in it I like stamped my logo on the inside and it bled through to the front so again 
had to get rid of it. So I want, but I, I feel like I wore it a lot, like having this white crop top is a very versatile thing in my wardrobe. So I got this really cool, like textured woven from the eco-friendly fabric haul. Um, it has almost like, I don't know how well you can see that, but it has like almost like a hound's toothy weave to it. And um, I wanted to make a white tape top. I was looking in my stash. Ideally, I was thinking linen, but then I saw this and I was like, oh, that could be cool. I like textured fabrics. Um, so this, <clears throat> this is going to be something that will actually be like an actual workhorse in my wardrobe. And this fabric is really cool. Like, not like, oh, it's so cool. Like, it's cool to the touch, um, which I think will be great for summer. So that will be the Tate Top. The Tate Top is a free pattern by Workroom Social. Check it out. I like the cropped version. It's really cool. This is another, like, I saw it and I needed one uh, pattern. So this is navy. Is it navy? Yes. It's a dark navy, super fine, lightweight French terry. I would love to make the new Libra bodysuit. Again, not 100% on the pattern company. I will write it below. <laughs> Sorry. This is another, like, I just jumped on it. I saw this pattern and I was like, oh my gosh, that would go awesome in my wardrobe. Because I'm trying to, my fall winter wardrobe previously was like very like preppy tomboy, like button downs with sweaters over them and trousers, which I still like that look, but I'm learning that I don't love to like have to do all this layering to be warm. I just want to wear like a thing, like a cozy sweater over a dress. I'm playing around with being more like feminine in my winter wardrobe. So I thought a bodysuit would be great. Um, I will probably um, hack the pattern to be more of like a thong in the back because I don't like stuff all up on the sides of my butt. So, uh... <laughs> I'm not 100% about it, whether or not this has enough stretch. Again, this was in my stash. I don't think this was from that eco-friendly haul, but it is from, um, I did, it was, it is dead stock that was gifted to me from a previous employer. Um, it feels like it has some good recovery, possibly some elastic in here. I mean, some, uh, last stain in here. Um, I'll have to check the pattern requirements. Um, anyways, this bodysuit is so cute. It has like a cutout circle in the back with a bow and I thought it would be really cute to do some kind of contrast colored bow like mustard and navy. Those are my colors y'all. So that I thought would be great for me for winter and I could just wear it under all kinds of stuff so that is that now we're getting to more of like smaller pieces of fabric this is a vintage floral that I've had in my stash forever um, it's so cute it's like green um, very retro it's a sheet it was a sheet I think but it's it's really soft it's been like worn in um, and I would love to make the peppermint play suit out of this. Crazy? Yes, maybe. It's going to look a little kooky. Um, this will be like a working around the house, probably, outfit. Uh, but I think it's just so fun. And I was really inspired by my friend Molly, who owns this amazing company called The Simple Kind. I will link them below. Has been making these really fun rompers and all these vintage fabrics, and I'm just in love with them. And the Peppermint Play Suit, which is a free pattern from Peppermint Magazine, is very similar. So I thought it would be fun to make that out of this. And I have plenty of this, I think. Um, sheets are awesome. I'm like 
nervous about using it because I haven't used this fabric and I love it, but I think this is just like a pattern match made in heaven. So yeah, I'm 35. I can wear a floral jumpsuit. <laughs> it's fine. Um, next up, I have the Simplicity 9012. This is the new pattern from their fall 2019, fall winter 2019 collection, I think. I've been, so I saw this pattern and I was like, oh my gosh, I want to make that. It's navy. I was going to just make it in navy because it looked just perfect. And then I was kind of thinking like, what else can I make it in? Like, it seems like so lame to just make it in the same color style that the pattern envelope has, which if you do that, I'm not calling you lame. I just like feel like for me, I'm like, come on, think of something different. So this awesome mod print um, that I got from, I believe, a thrifty notion. I had no idea what I was going to do with it. Um, and then I was thinking about this pattern and I was like, what do I have? That could be really fun. This is another one of those makes that I'm like, where and when am I going to wear this? I don't care. It's, it's going to be so great. I think I have enough. So the, I don't know how wide this is. Let's, let me look on the floor real quick. Okay, so it's 45 inches wide and the pattern calls for three and a quarter yard for 45 inches wide and I have about three yards. So I think I can squeak it out. Um, this is the other thing that I will be using that Ogden slip for uh, because it is like, it has the texture of like an organza almost. It's not quite as sheer um, or, I mean, it is sheer. Am I holding two layers or one? So it is sheer-ish, um, but it's not quite as sheer as an organza. Um, and it doesn't quite have that same like bouncy body of an organza. So maybe I'm like wrong calling it an organza. But would you just look at that print? So cute. And I'm going to make this fun dress out of it. And I don't know where I'm going to wear it, but I'm going to do it. And we'll see. We'll see what happens where I just might wear it to the grocery store. Next up. The Gabriola skirt by Sewaholic. Um, this is another beautiful fabric that I got from a thrifty notion. It is navy polka dots. It is a silk dupiani. And I don't know if I actually have enough <laughs> of this. But my goal is to make it into a Gabriella skirt. I love this pattern. I made one before for a friend's wedding. Um, I'll post a picture here. I, um, I love the drape of this skirt. This is a little bit see-through also, so I would probably have to wear a slip under it, which is fine. I have a skirt slip, no biggie. I love the drape of the pattern. I think it would look beautiful in this fabric. I think I am dreaming thinking that I'm going to be able to fit that skirt on this fabric, but I have been known to make magic happen. So we'll hope for the best. <laughs> But I just think that could be so fun. And I love a skirt like, I love a like statement skirt like that, like just with a t-shirt. I think that's just the funnest thing ever. So Gabriola skirt. This has been on my list for a while, so I might do this after the Wilder gown. We will see. 
Okay, next up, we have the Simplicity 8927. This is a Mimi G pattern. I won this pattern in an Instagram giveaway last year. Super cute tie crop top. I'm into crop tops for summer. I Summer, I like to wear, I realize a lot of crops and high-waisted things. I feel like it's more breathable. <laughs> than like having just stuff all around on your hips. So I thought it would be really fun to do like some color blocking with the like little tie. So I'm going to use the, this leftover linen from my Sierra jumpsuit that I have not posted yet. Um, and this leftover beautiful blush I forgot what this is. A linen, viscose linen wall, I think, from Blackbird Fabrics. And I love these colors together. So I thought it would be fun to do like a like a two-sided shirt. And then whatever the back is depends on how much I have of this. Because I would like the back to be mustard because, um, you know, mustard's my color. But if it needs to be pink... It can be pink. I'm branching into the pink, you guys. It's bonkers over here. So I think this will be a really fun top for summer. I'm pretty stoked about this. Last but not least, um, some more coziness. You've seen this before. This is the leftovers from my toaster sweater. This is um, a Style Maker Fabrics fabric. I got it from their Fall Fashion Tour two years ago and I've really been wanting to make the Tabor v-neck from Sew House 7. It has a short sleeve version that I thought could be really cute in this and I think I have enough. Um, here in Texas, you know, sometimes we wear short sleeve warm things because we're weird like that. So, <laughs> I thought that could be really cute and warm and cozy for fallish Tabor v neck. And I love this. I love this print. So, yes, that is my Make Nine. Thank you so much for watching and following along. Um, did you make a Make Nine? How do you feel about Make Nines? Which of my Make Nine is your fave? Um, let me know in the comments below. Do you think I'm crazy for having two things on my Make 9 that I don't necessarily are not practical to wear? Let me know. I won't be offended. Um, I so much appreciate you following my channel. Be sure to subscribe um, so you don't miss any videos. It really helps out my channel a lot. And tell a friend. Tell a friend about my channel. Um, <laughs> as always, I will see y'all next week with my uh, so unconventional finished project that I'm so excited about. And as always, happy sewing. Bye. Next up, these are last. Oh, I forgot. I forgot a fabric. Let me get that out real quick. Is it in here? I don't even know.